So if you've been following the blockchain space for the last few years, you've probably heard the term decentralization. And decentralization is a fantastic concept. It allows us to build systems that are secure and correct, but they don't rely on one party for their security and their con correctness. They rely on a whole different bunch of parties, maybe different people, different computers, different devices all over the world coming together to make the system secure. Now, Decentralization is often pitted against its arch enemy, which is centralization. And centralization is bad because there's a single point of failure that can be attacked. But what I want to do in this talk is I want to step back from this dichotomy that I often see being discussed in the blockchain space, centralization versus decentralization, and really think about what blockchains give us, which is trust and security. And so what I want to do in this talk is talk about how blockchains can help us build the future of trust. So the story of centralization starts with the internet. When the internet started in the 90s, there was this idea that it was decentralized. We could all host our own content online. We didn't have to wait for the radio or the TV to broadcast our ideas. We could communicate with people all over the world without paying long distance fees. But I would argue that this decentralization has actually converged to centralization. Today, instead of posting content on in individually posted websites, we post it on Facebook. Instead of having individual mail servers run by individual companies, we use outsourced mail providers like Yahoo or Google. Instead of taking our resumes and emailing them to people or submitting them to job forms, we all look for jobs on LinkedIn. And even our physical world is being centralized through the internet. We used to take taxis that were regulated by cities and operated by individual companies, and now we just use Uber to get around the city. And so we're seeing this increased centralization in the internet, and along with it, comes with these vulnerabilities. Now, I want to say that centralization is not a bad thing. There's a reason that we've moved to this model. Facebook is really efficient. It's a great way to communicate. It's a really nice interface. Uber is really fast, and it's really easy to get around. These are systems that people want to use. On the other hand, there are some issues. Today, you might have heard that Facebook announced um, that they found a disinformation campaign that was targeting um, Americans in the 2018 elections in order to influence the elections. Why are they using Facebook? It's a centralized platform that's easy to attack. We also have data breaches. In 2013, it was um, found that every single Yahoo account that existed at that time was actually breached. And in fact, we didn't even find out that this happened until three years later. Similarly, in 2012, um, LinkedIn accounts were breached. Uber accounts were, breached, were, bre were breached in 2016. And again, we didn't know that they were breached until much later because this was um, tried to be hidden by Uber at the time. So we can see that centralization creates this great place for users to go but it also creates a great place for attackers to go and try to attack those users. And so the promise of the blockchain is that instead of having to trust a single centralized party with our data or information or our money or whatever we're using the blockchain for, we can actually trust a bunch of distributed parties. And the idea is we have all of these parties, it's really hard to compromise every single one of them. So even if we do compromise some of them or some of them are acting in a biased and malicious way, we can still have security because we've got everyone else behaving properly. So people are really excited about blockchain's various applications, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this today. But one thing we've all probably heard of is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is one of the most active applications of the blockchain today. What it gives us is we can use blockchains to build a decentralized currency. Instead of trusting a central bank to issue currency, instead of trusting a government, we can have decentralized borderless currency that does not rely on banks. And so there's been a lot of excitement about Bitcoin, Zcash, Vertcoin, all of these different types of currencies that are being built on top of blockchains. So what's one of the first applications that people are using cryptocurrency for? They're actually using it for investment and trading. And so one very sort of common use case today is I've bought a bunch of Bitcoins and I've decided that I want to buy some other kind of currency. Maybe in this example, I want to buy Zcash, which is a kind of anonymous cryptocurrency. So how do I do that? Okay, let's talk about how people do that today. So we have our user, Alice. She wants to trade her Bitcoins for some Zcash. How does she do it? Well, what she does today is she goes to a centralized exchange, a centralized cryptocurrency exchange. She gives her Bitcoins to that exchange. Then she tells it, I would like to buy some other kind of currency, let's say Zcash. What's the price? Okay, I like this price. Let's go ahead. And then the exchange will then give her her Zcash later. She'll be able to withdraw the Zcash from the exchange. This is how you trade cryptocurrency today at centralized exchanges, and there are tons of these all over the world that people are actively trading on. So this is great. People want to trade on centralized exchanges. Why? Because a lot of people can come to the exchange, trade the currency with each other, prices are good, UX is good, it's convenient, it's fast, people want to use these systems, that's why we have these systems. But at the same time, if we take a step back, isn't it strange that we've invented decentralized currency, but then what we do with it 
is give it to centralized exchanges and that's how we use it and that's how we trade with it, we're seeing this mirroring of what happened on the internet when it went from decentralized to centralized again. And so in the, in the blockchain community, there's this discussion now about maybe we shouldn't be using centralized exchanges anymore. Maybe we should use decentralized exchanges. Why are we trusting the centralized exchange? And in fact, this is not just a theoretical concern. We've seen issues with centralized exchanges. In 2014, there was the famous um, hack of Mt. Gox where 750,000 Bitcoins were lost. You have to think that a Bitcoin is roughly around, let's say, $10,000 today per coin. So 750,000 of them were lost in 2014. And this keeps happening. These are different exchanges that have been hacked, including one in Japan that happened this year, which called the biggest theft in the history of the world without exaggeration. So, you know, the, the promise of centralization is actually leading to these types of attacks. So what do we do about this? So there's a whole movement towards decentralizing exchanges, but what I want to argue in this talk is actually this is missing the point. The whole point of blockchains is not centralization versus decentralization. It's trust. Okay, let's step back to the example of the traditional internet or something like Facebook. When we use Facebook, we give them our data, we trust them, and if they do something with our data we don't like, there's not too much we can do about it. There's not too many levers we can pull. There are legal levers, but in terms of technological levers, there's not much we can do. On the other hand, when we work with cryptocurrencies or blockchains, we have a blockchain. A blockchain is decentralized. A blockchain has to be, you have to compromise a lot of parties if you want to actually compromise the blockchain. And so why are we so focused on the centralization versus decentralization question when we're, we, what we should really be thinking about is the blockchain question. Do we have a blockchain question? Do we have a blockchain here? Is there something we can trust instead of the centralized party? And so what we're doing in our company at Commonwealth Crypto and the sort of viewpoint that I have for this entire space is that we don't need to think about it as a dichotomy between centralized and decentralized. We can build centralized systems that are backed by the blockchain. If we trust the blockchain, we don't have to trust the centralized system. So let me give you a picture here. We have our centralized system that can be compromised, but actually what's giving us security and backing our actions is the decentralized system, all of these parties working together to make sure that the blockchain is secure and correct. And so in specific, what we're doing right now is building systems for trading at centralized exchanges that rely on the blockchain for security rather than the centralized exchange for security. Even if the centralized exchange is attacked, we can still have security people, coins don't have to be lost. And as a bigger picture, I think it's a really exciting time right now as these blockchain systems are being built and as the community starts to think about what do we actually want from a blockchain? What do we actually get from a blockchain? Do we get decentralization? Do we get security or do we get trust? In my view, centralization is not going away. People would like that the usability, the liquidity, the gathering of users together, we're not gonna get away from that. But we can at least use the blockchain to build systems that are more secure and robust despite the fact that they're centralized. Thank you.